decade following the Civil War, people of all creeds and colors were part of the West. The following is a story about two of those people. Are you sure we came to the right place? Looks like a ghost town. Yeah, if so, one of them ghosts plays a pretty fancy piano. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me, please. Hurt you? We ain't here to hurt you. You mean you're not gonna kill me? <laughs> of course not. Oh, well, I'll make it up to you. You'll see. That's fine. You can stop by pouring us a drink. Sure, whatever you want. Anything else? Want anything else? Yeah. First, I'd like you to tell me. Get down, will you? Maybe we did come to the wrong town. Somebody sure thinks so.
Are you Mark Venner? No, my name is Earl Corey. Where's Fenner? He sent you here to do his dirty work? Ma'am, I don't know what's going on around here. All I want is a little information. Well, kill me. Get it over with. I don't want to live anymore. He said he loved me. And then he left me here to die. What is all this talk about dying? <sighs> Ma'am? 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 <gasps> talking to myself around here. you trying to fool? What do you mean? You don't want to been creeping around. Well, sure. I come out and I find you and both horses gone. I'm just trying to help. The shooting stop. Ain't no need to get upset. It's about ready to fold. Having a hard time of it, too. Easy, girl. I'm wandering around, likely to get my head shot off, and you're here playing midwife to a horse. Don't shout. You might spook her. What's her trouble? Fool's not in the right position, as far as I can tell. Yeah. 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 I can feel her kicking. Who's he? Didn't have a chance to ask his name. What's your name, son? Miguel, senor. Is this your horse? No, senor. She is the horse of Senor Carver. He owns the livery stable. I work for him. Where is he? He went away. Everybody went away. Why? Bad men say they will kill anyone left in town. So the people all ran. What bad men? When? I do not know, senor. Tonight, I think. Why didn't you leave with the others? No one asked me. Besides, I had to look after Margarita. Anybody else left in town? I am not sure. The Apache, I think, he works for the widow, and Senor Driscoll, who sleeps in the stable, and the two women from the saloon, they were left behind by the others. There were not enough wagons or horses. Where's the sheriff? He is dead. That is why the bad men are coming. Pobrecita. Where are we going? 
Let's go and get what we came for. That's what we're doing. Then we're going to get out of this town. Uh, this man needs help. Are you forgetting? Somebody's already taken a couple of shots at us. No, I ain't forgotten. Well, if this don't beat everything. Somewhere in this town is a bounty worth $50, and you're worrying about fooling a mayor? Well, you heard what he said. Somebody's going to wipe out this town. All right, I'll go looking for the bounty myself. Try to find somebody that can make sense out of this whole mess. If you hear any shooting, I wouldn't trouble myself about it if I was you. It's only me getting killed. If you're the one that's been trying to kill us, ma'am, I got just one thing to say to you. You're a very poor shot. I'm the best shot in this county. Then how come you've been doing so much missing? Just trying to scare you out. So you tell Mark Fenney he can't have this town. I don't know why in the world they'd want it. It's the most inhospitable place I'd ever seen. Then get out! What in the world is the matter with you people? You know as well as I do. All we know is we got business here, and you've been making targets out of us. I don't take too kindly to it. Well, that's too bad. I do what I want. This is my town. Your town? You heard her. Hold it. Ma'am, do you mind taking their guns? <sighs> With pleasure. Your town. That's enough out of you. They rough you up any? No. I was scouting out a ways. I thought maybe I could catch sight of Fenner and his boys. At least we caught two of them. Ma'am, I think it's about time we made something plain. We're here on another matter. We ain't got nothing to do with your troubles. Start walking. Deputy, you're making a mistake. Maybe, but don't you go making one. Now move! <laughs> Where's your prisoner? What prisoner? 
We were deputized by the marshal and Tombstone to come down here, pick up a prisoner, and take him up there to be hung for murder. His name is Trim Fenner. What kind of story are you trying to sell us? Show him the paper. This could be a trick, Fenner's way of throwing us off guard. Let me see that. Looks real enough. Of course, it's hard to tell for sure. It might be better to telegraph the marshal. We should get a reply by tomorrow. <laughs> that is, if we're still alive tomorrow. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, you know that Mark Fenner and his men are coming to destroy this town and kill everyone in it. Why? Revenge. Last week, the sheriff and Fenner's younger brother shot it out. They ended up killing each other. Fenner swears his brother was murdered. Well, he... He blames the town. Fram Fenner's dead. There goes our $50. The rest of the folks lit out when they heard the news. Took every horse and buggy in this whole area. Just some of us stayed here to defend our homes. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. You're gonna defend this town against how many men? I don't know. Maybe... 20, 25. Oh. Miss, uh, what's your name again? Augusta Barnes. Well, Miss Barnes, maybe you've lived out in this little desert town so long that you got your brains baked. You and this boy are gonna hold this town against 20 armed men? Look, mister. My husband and I founded this town. We built practically every stick of it ourselves with our own hands. I will not allow it to be destroyed. Well, that's just fine. While you're defending this town, what happens to us? <laughs> that's just a fine choice you give us, isn't it? We either help you, or we gotta stay in here and wait for Fenner to come in and kill us. That's correct. Well? I say yes. Are you going crazy, too? No. If somebody's coming in this town, gonna kill everybody in it, I wanna have a gun in my hands. No, no, I mean to be fair about this. I mean, this is not your town. You haven't got the same stake in it as we do. So I'll make your proposition. You help us, and I'll pay you, the two of you. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars? Of course, you have to be alive to collect it. Ma'am, I accept. But on the one condition, you're not going to question any orders I give. You give? Now hold on. Who elected you? Who put you in charge? An accident of birth, boy. Made me a Confederate officer, and you're a Yankee private. We won the war, remember? Now, wait. I'm deputy. I'm running things. Be still. Agreed. Let him out, Jim. Go on. All right. Round up anybody that might be left in town and tell them to come to the saloon right away. Go on. Do as he says. Got any dynamite in town? In the hardware store. Good. I'm going to go shopping. You want to come along? Oh, yes, sir, Captain. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I want to see how you officers figure things out. Yeah, it's a plan, but ain't too sure how good it is. You got a better one? Not handy. Then help me find some dynamite. Unless... Unless what? Unless you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Well, what are you thinking? We could get on our horses and ride out of here. Leave the whole mess to the widow and that boy deputy. We made a deal. No, I didn't. He said yes. I'd lie about anything to get out of jail. We don't owe him nothing. On the other hand, we'd be walking away from an awful lot of money. Yeah, but we'd be alive to spend the next money we earn. I can't argue with you there. Of course, we could stay around here long enough for you to show him how to rig up that dynamite. I could take care of the mayor. Yeah, that wouldn't do any harm, would it? 
Maybe just an hour or so. At most. In the meantime, we're gonna need these shovels and help me find some fuses. <laughs> Yes, I am sorry. I tried to stop them, but they would not listen. They took your horses. Who? Oh. The Apache and Senor Driscoll. You got no choice now, Captain. The Fenio's got to work. Thus, we're going to die in this town. Now, the only thing we have in our favor is the element of surprise. From what you told me about Mark Fenner, He's not going to be expecting much opposition. He'll come riding in here at night with all his men, and that's when we're going to hit him, and hit him hard. But we're only going to get one chance, and if we miss that, we won't get another. What do you want us to do, Mr. Corey? Well, the first thing I want you and you to go to the hardware store, get a couple of shovels, and dig some holes halfway up the street. About four holes, 20 feet apart. Then what? I'll let you know when you have the holes dug. What about me? What's my job? You said you were the best shot in the county? With a rifle. Well, you're going to get a chance to prove it. Bonnie, what about you? Have you handled a rifle? No. Well, you better teach her how. That girl can't even pour a drink of liquor without spilling it. Let alone hold a rifle. All I want from her is some noise. Now, what have you got planned for me? Welcome to the party. <laughs> it looks more like a, a wake. Let's everybody have a little drink. On the house. You're part of this, too. Count me out. You're uh, pretty unfriendly. Oh, we don't need her, Mr. Corey. Let her drink. We need everybody. Well, what are you standing around for? Get out there and start digging. Watch your tone, Corey, and don't order me around. I'm not your darkie. Didn't mean it that way. It was a figure of speech, more like. Why don't you just go do like the man said? Are you planning on setting off that dynamite? Fuses, how else? I think I'll take a look around. Unless you got something else to say to this army. Wouldn't want to miss nothing, Captain. In the real education. You're dismissed. Private. Teach her how to use a rifle, too. I'll be right back. Don't count on me, Mr. Corey. I'm not uh, joining your little group. You've been drafted. Not me. What's the matter with her? Oh, her brave lover ran off and left her alone. Sam Jessup is the hero's name. Why don't you mind your own business, huh? They were partners in this place. I'll bet he ran off with the money. Left you flat, huh? I can't say as I blame him. Look at her. Twilling the liquor like that. Wallowing in self-pity. Get out of here. If you had any pride at all, you'd be trying to figure out how to stay alive. Alive? Stay alive for what? Well, if for nothing else, to put a bullet in Sam Jessup's heart. Captain? Why not? 
you connect all those surprises to those fuses, you ain't gonna be able to time it out right. I suppose you got a better idea, huh? Give me a sack of white flour. Go ahead. the street. Now, as soon as I start firing, you do too. You just keep pumping bullets into them little white spots. And that'll detonate them? Uh, if we put enough lead into them, at least they're supposed to. Here, take this. Everything else all set? Why ask me, boy? Why don't you go look for yourself? I only hope you're as tough when the action starts as you are right now with your mouth. Don't worry about me. I have to, son. It's one thing to hang that badge on your vest. It's another thing to be man enough to wear it. I'm man enough. Yeah? Well, we'll see. It's gonna be dark in about another half hour. Where's your rifle? Please, senor. I do not wish to fight. Well, that makes two of us. I don't wish to fight either. But I promised the Virgin Mother that I never lift my hand to any man. I cannot go back on that promise. Oh, no. You do not understand, Senor. It is not that Look, I am a... This is a rifle. Take it. Now, either use it or don't. Whatever you want. After that, each time you fire, you have to cock it like I did. You understand? Well, oh, don't be scared. You're gonna do all right. But remember, don't shoot until that dynamite goes off. Look, just uh, make as much noise as you can. start shooting until that dynamite goes off. Don't worry, Mr. Corey. A good soldier.
See, they're all gone. Disappointed if you hadn't done that, ma'am. We got one of them. He's dead. I wouldn't count this a victory, deputy. He'll be back. Meanwhile, take this horse for the lady. What are we going to do now, Mr. Corey? Well, I don't know what you're going to do, ma'am. But as for me, I'm going to have a drink. Try to figure some way to keep from dying. Before dawn. How do you know that? Well, think if you were Fenner. He's already been burned by us once at night. It's time he's gonna wait until it's daylight and come at us from all sides. Well, we could build barricades and get ready. We could build the Great Wall of China and not be able to hold this down. Look, we've got you, Jamal, Jade, the lady and myself. She's too scared to fight. And him, he wouldn't fight if he could. They could just slip through almost anywhere. Burn up the town and us with it. We had just one chance to surprise him. And we lost it. Captain, can the private speak out in this your outfit? Go ahead. I still think we got that something we had. We can still surprise him. How? Most likely Finn is right outside town waiting for daylight. That's right. I know where he is. What's the last thing he expects from us right now? What? For us to attack him. <laughs> attack with that? Well, I'd be glad if there was a troop of cavalry, but that's all we got. That is about the most... The most brilliant idea I have heard in a long time. As a matter of fact, that is so brilliant, I wish I thought of it. Well, thank you, Captain. Just a loyal Yankee private speaking his mind. Well? What do you mean, attack? Just what that word implies. <laughs> You're right. It could be a big funeral, but count me in. Ma'am? Well, like you said earlier, Mr. Corey, everybody joins. I want to be alive when Sam Jessup comes back to town. <laughs> you see that? We start out with a draft army, now we have a bunch of volunteers. Oh, they'll get over it. They ain't been in the army that long. Somebody said something about a funeral. Well, we're going to have a funeral, but we're going to stage it ourselves. Miguel? See? Si. Wasn't there a hearse wagon somewhere in this town? See. Si. Well, you go get it and hitch it to that horse and bring it in front of the saloon here. You got another plan? Got the makings of one. Ladies, you're going to entertain the troops. The troops? Yeah, theirs. I can't. I can't. I'll go alone. I'll go alone. Bonnie wouldn't be any use. Oh, she's going to be fine. As a matter of fact, Oh, don't be ridiculous, Mr. Corey. This is your town, ma'am. If you don't go, we don't go. All right. Ma'am, you can't. Oh, I'll be all right, Jim. Don't you worry. What'll I do first? 
Come with me. Put some more bottles in this bag, and then stash it away under the driver's seat of that hearse. So the ladies go up to Fenner's camp, then what? Did you ever hear of a Trojan horse? Mm-mm. That's something the Greeks invented a long time ago. We're gonna have a Trojan horse those Greeks never even heard of. Shoes or rabbit's feet in there? Rather find a cannon. We're gonna need all sorts of luck to make this work. If it don't, we're gonna feel mighty naked in the middle of that camp. Well, at least we're not gonna be alone if that's any solace. You're wondering about that. Though sure they can be trusted, especially the women. Oh, you're talking about the young girl? Her too. You saw how much she could be counted on about an hour ago. I know, but we've been over all that. You mean Jade? Ain't knowed anyone yet that loved a bottle wouldn't sell you out for a taste of the cork. And smile all the time they was doing it. Yeah, I know. And I'm not sure we have any choice. Something to leave her here? No, it's not gonna work without Jade. Just put yourself in Fenner's place. Now, he's gonna be ten sides suspicious anyway, no matter what those women say. And without her, the whole thing's gonna smell like a fish market. When's the last time you've been in a fish market? About the last time that you were dancing at the Savannah Club, Cotillion? That's what I thought. We've got enough if we make every shot count. Yes, sir, Captain. If I get the chance, that's the part I'm not too sure of. Well, you just gotta trust them. Like they have to trust that the whole plan will work. Will it? Let's go find out. <laughs> It's fine. Now remember, we depend upon you to make this work. I'll try. think you're doing? You mock Fenner? Why? Well, if you are, you gotta help us. They chased us halfway out here. They're crazy, those people. They think they can hold that town against you and your boys. Why, we barely got out with our lives. Hey, this is Carter's horse. This ain't the kind of horse you hitch to a wagon. It's the fine riding mare. Then unhitch it if you want. We didn't have time to ask questions. All we did is grab this rig and took off. 
Who are you and what's this all about? I'm Jade Willoughby. I own the saloon in town. And these here are two of my girls, Bonnie and Augusta. Now, we came here to ask you for protection. We didn't want to get caught in that town when you boys attacked again. So you ran off, just like that? Well, we risked our lives to come out here, all in the spirit of true friendship. Why, to prove it, we brought along some whiskey. It's right here under this seat. Come on, boys, help yourselves. Compliments of Jade Willoughby. Hold it. Could be a trick. Come on, Mark, stop worrying over nothing. These ladies want to show us a good time. And you're downright inhospitable. Now, don't believe in taking chances. Look, we agreed to help you take that town, but remember one thing, it was your brother gunned down, not ours. So all we're asking in return is to have a little fun. Huh? All right. You gonna have some? Sure. Only it's not whiskey I'm wanting. Well, maybe we could go somewhere and have a little talk. Why not? <laughs> First one's always a hot stuff. <laughs> Here, honey, you're next. L listen, mister, can, can we take a walk first? Oh, sure. Anything you want. How come you got two? Oh, help yourself. Come on, honey. <laughs> to get you off alone so I could tell you. What kind of trap? That hearse? There are three men inside there. Two bounty hunters and a deputy from the town. Bounty hunters? What are they planning to do? As soon as your men are full of whiskey, they plan to come out shooting. Why are you telling me this? Well, I didn't want to take any part of it, but they forced me into it. Besides, I'd rather take my chances with you. That hearse is going to come in right handy. Three of them all boxed and ready to be delivered. Listen to me a minute. See if we got some uninvited guests. A couple of bounty hunters and that deputy from town. Deputy, you and your friends throw out your guns. You hear me? Throw out your guns or we open fire. I'm counting to three, then we start shooting. One. Two. Three. Trade bullets here all night. 
But we got no stomach for this fight. All we want is a chance to ride out of here. Then get on your horses and ride out and don't come back. It's Corey. Ted has taken Jade. Please, senor. Let go of her. Proud of you. Fit as a post. Thank you, Mr. Corey. We'll always be grateful. Well, it's not a bad day's pay for one night's work, is it? <laughs> Can't say I want to take it up as a steady thing, though. I'm much obliged to you. Well, I'm obliged to you, too. Oh! Don't you remember what I told you last night about those widow's weeds? I understand your point, Mr. Corey, and I thank you for it. In fact, when folks come back into town and the store's open again, well, I plan to do some shopping. Get me some new dresses. You ready? Yeah, let's get out this time before something else happens. Is she all right? Who are you? Never mind. Where's Jade? Your name wouldn't happen to be Sam Jessup, would it? Sam! Sam! Oh, Sam! I knew you'd come back for me. Oh, I came back as soon as I could, Jade, honey. I, I don't know why I ran away like that, but I knew you wouldn't be angry. <laughs> Why don't you know better than to believe a woman? I'll be glad to be shut of this place. Me too. Just another dusty desert town. Probably blow away in a month. Mm -hmm. 